my name is Sean Beasley and I'd like to talk to you about the first steps that you want to take when unboxing your new OTRS. Once you've logged in you'll see the dashboard overview and you'll see a red notification field. This red notification field will come about in various parts of OTRS and the first time we encounter him is when you've installed OTRS. So what it says here, do not use the super user account to work with OTRS. Create new agents and work with these accounts instead. So if we click on this uh, link, it will go ahead and redirect us to the admin user. Once at the admin user, we should do uh, two things. The first thing is we should, in order to uh, make sure that our installation remains secure, we should change the SA name from root at localhost to something that's private for our company. Now this can really be anything. Um, it's not important at this point, but it just shouldn't be rooted localhost because everybody user uses rooted localhost on their installation. So let's just change this um, to show OTRS. Like I said, it doesn't matter. It's just something so that uh, users can't log on right away with rooted localhost. You could set this admin email to something more appropriate than rooted localhost. Rooted localhost was an email that was used, uh, still used today in Unix. Uh, most of the people using OTRS today probably aren't using this rooted localhost account to receive emails. Um, if they are, if you are, then you can leave it. If not, then change it to something more appropriate like um, my admin user at my.company.com and then encrypt the password to something completely um, irrelevant. I have a password encryptor, for example, so I can just generate a password here, fill it, and then I'll change it again so that you guys don't hack mines. <laughs> my, my, no, I'm just kidding. Um, instance have to know where it is before you can hack it. Yeah, and then we'll go ahead and click submit and that will change the uh, well he's complaining about the domain because it's trying to check the domain so we'll use OTRS.com and invalid. So now I've changed the login information for the admin user so nobody can hack into my system uh, and you get a hold of this very important user. You may need that user information later so please don't forget it. Um, if you do and you've tr put in a legal email address you can always recover the uh, address later. I could actually use a different name than admin. Admin's one of those things that uh, people like to hack. So if you um, use, for example, your username, let's say your username is uh, in the in the company is SHB, then that could, you could use something like a.shb for your admin account. If you use best practices and don't work with your admin account on a daily basis, if not, you can just use your login name and assign your user uh, admin privileges. So then we're going to use our email address. Now we've, looking at these fields, this uh, our basic agent management screen, our basic agent fields, um, you have your title, which is like Mr., Mrs., Professor, Doctor, uh, whatever you want to use for a title. First name, of course, last name, username, password, and email address. These are the uh, five required fields. And um, these f f three fields here, and this field, if you're using an Active Directory or a, a LDAP backend, then 
these are the four fields that you're going to want to sync and you won't be able to sync anything except for these four fields so if you want further information about how to add additional fields for your user data in order to have like personalized phone numbers or department names or whatever then you're gonna have to wait for a different video about using dynamic fields for creating these types of special fields for your users but it is possible just not um, out of an LDAP or Active Directory and not by adding them here into the database. The next is the validity, valid, invalid, you're going to see this everywhere in OTRS, invalid is invalid, invalid temporarily is the same thing as invalid, it's just a visual indicator that you're making a temporary change to this piece of OTRS whether it be a queue or a state or anything else that you can't delete because of consistency with the, in the database. And valid means it can be used. Um, invalid and invalid temporary by users and customers prevent the users and customers from being selected within the agent front end, but they're all still visible in the admin back end, so they won't disappear for administrators just for users of the system. And the language, if you have all of these languages still within your system, it's also another video, how do I get all of these languages that I'm not using out of my system. Um, a skin, you can choose a, a default skin and a default theme as well. These can be uh, re-preferred by the agent or you can also make take these settings away from the personalization so that they're always forced. Just like the rest of these settings that are about to come out of office time. Um, I don't know why you would set an initial out of office time, but it's here. A uh, new ticket notification, ticket follow up notification, ticket lock out timeout, lock timeout notifications, ticket move notifications, overview refresh time. Overview refresh time, I can understand setting that um, to make sure that the agents are actually using the refresh time on the front line to see new tickets that are coming in otherwise the queue will just remain empty if it's empty without them manually refreshing now what does happen is basically every time you go in and you do an action with an OTRS the screen refreshes so this setting can be negligible uh, the other notification settings are good uh, can also be uh, preferred individually by the agent if so desired if not they can be um, configured out of the preference setting. All of these settings are can be preferred by default so if you want your system uh, to not have these settings for your users you're going to have to configure them out. And these uh, email notifications are only based upon the preferred queues which we're going to get to here in a minute. Here you can prefer um, which screen should be seen after a new ticket creation. Here you can add a comment for the user um, define dynamic overview dynamic fields overview limits so you can see how many um, fields per page for dynamic fields overviews should be shown uh, the overview limit small medium and uh, large or preview preview and medium that's uh, a definition so the only thing we're missing now is the Q view, which is also an interesting point here. There's no um, my queues. Normally, there should be a list of queues here. This is version 3.1.8. Maybe they changed something. Let's go ahead and click submit. We're going to add read write permissions for all of these. We'll go back in and look one more time. Yeah, okay, all the permissions are there. So there's no way to get back uh, once you've created this the user is going to go to the group agent screen and then if you want to go back and actually look at the agent properties you're going to have to go back to the admin go back to agent management and click on the user themselves here's the queues i don't know where they were just a while ago um, so that's what i wanted to show you when you create this user all of these email notifications are based upon these queues in the, in the my queues that might be a bug. I'm not sure why those things show up after I add the group permissions. If I go back to the overview and click Add Agent again. Huh. It's uh, really, really interesting that those show up afterwards. That was different in the past. Bug or feature. Anyways, moving on. That's the first thing we need to do. Once we've done that, then we can um, log out and log back in with our newly created user. 
when we've remembered the password. There we are. Now we can safely operate within OTRS. We've talked about how to create a new user, how to secure your OTRS using uh, by encrypting the username or using a different username and encrypting the password so that not the, so that the default password is not part of your system so that nobody can once they found your system hack their way in using rooted localhost and uh, destroy your system and now we're logged in with our new admin user and we can start doing other fun things with O2S. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.